On behalf of HT Media Group, I welcome you all to the earnings webinar to discuss the financial results of the first quarter of uh, Hindustan Media Ventures Limited, which was chaired yesterday, and of HT Media Limited, which was released earlier today. On the call with me today are Mr. Priyash Gupta, Group CFO, Mr. Parvez Bajan, Group Controller, and members of our investment relations team. We will be now starting our presentation. Hope it's visible to all of you. This presentation and the financial statements are available on stock exchange websites and the investor relations section of our company website. On your screen now is slide number two, which captures a disclaimer regarding forward-looking statements. Uh, as a practice, we do not provide specific revenue or earnings guidance. Kindly keep this in mind. Moving on, the next slide gives our chairperson's comment on the performance of the company for the quarter, and I quote, overall, our performance in Q1 2324 has seen an improvement. While revenue is muted, profitability has expanded on the back of continued streamlining of costs and easing of commodity prices. Circulation and advertising grow on a YOY basis in print, while in radio, non-FCT and value-added solutions drove the growth. Rising media spends by companies, growing consumer demand, more government spends, and relative easing and inflationary pressure all augur well in the near term for print, radio, and digital sectors of the m and &E industry, which should benefit your company. We are focused on working towards achieving profitable growth in our core businesses while expanding into new areas such as OTT. We remain committed to our journalism by continuing to provide credible and insightful news and analysis to our audiences. Moving on to the agenda for today on slide number four, we will begin the performance update with com comments on our consolidated financials for the first quarter. This will be followed by detailed remarks on print radio and digital businesses. We will open for Q&A after the presentation concludes. With that, I hand it over to Piyush. Thanks, Alitya. Thanks, Anna. If, if we may just track the presentation. Our consolidated financial results Total revenue came at 445 crore, a growth of 3%. Uh, EBITDA at 27 crores is a growth of 200, uh, 250 plus percent. Margins therefore improved from a negative 4 to a positive 6%. Our PBT came in at a negative 21%, which is, however, an improvement of 68%. And PBT margins at a negative 5 from a negative 15, same period last year. Cash still remains a healthy 900, uh, 900 crores. Sequentially, uh, sequentially, our uh, revenues declined by 10% and our PBT uh, improved by 39% from a negative 34 to a negative 21. Moving on. Now, on the print business performance, our ad revenues uh, came at 244 crores, which is a growth of 2%. Circulation revenue came at 4% growth at 60 crores. Operating revenue was 324, which is a decline of 7%. Operating EBITDA was flat versus the same period last year at two crores with the margin at 1%. Primary reasons are given the bottom of the chart. Ad revenue growth for the quarter is basis, uh, a YOI basis supported by better ad volumes. So the volumes uh, have come to a pre-pandemic level. Circulation revenue rose on a YOI and a quarter on quarter basis owing to healthy realizations for copy. Overall operating revenue saw a decline on account of a one-off other operating income in the base year. Uh, and operating EBITDA was marginally positive. Having a quick look at our English business, our ad revenues on a YOY basis grew 2% from 127 to 130. On a quarterly basis, they came down 16% to 130 crores. Circulation revenue on a YOY basis was 53% because of active uh, realization per copy actions. And are on a Y Y on a Q on Q basis, they were uh, flat to a marginal decline of two percent. And circulation revenue improved Y Y due to uh, improvement in our realizations for copy and ad revenue grew Y Y basis as categories such as education, retail, real estate grew while FMCG auto remained subdued. A quick look at our Hindi business. Our ad revenues uh, were up two percent at one hundred and fifteen crores. Uh, and on a quarterly basis, they were flat at about 115 crores versus 116 last uh, last quarter. Circulation revenue on a YOI basis were down 6%. On a quarterly basis, they were up 2%. And key highlights for the quarter, ad revenue grew YOI primarily supported by higher ad volumes. 
on a YOY basis, categories such as retail, education, auto, healthcare grew while real estate and BFSI were subdued. Circulation revenue saw growth both on Q on Q basis backed by higher copies. Radio, uh, our operating revenue grew by 4% and came in at 35 crores and our operating EBITDA uh, was virtually flat at about two, uh, uh, 2 crores. Margins remain flat at 6%. On a, quart, uh, on a quarterly basis, sequential basis, uh, it's a 5% decline on operating revenue and operating uh, EBITDA, it's a 182% growth. And key revenue uh, growth on YOY basis is led by non-FCT segments, which is basically on-air and on-ground events and various other integrations with our uh, on-air uh, activities. Operating activity has improved uh, for same quarter last year. The digital segment, our operating revenues came in at 36 crores, which is a decline of 9%, and operating EBITDA at a negative 17 crores, which is a decline of 100%. Uh, operating EBITDA margin came at a negative 48% as against a negative 22% same period last year. On key highlights, quarter on quarter revenue growth with improvement across all business segments in digital and increase in EBITDA losses owing to investment in new businesses. With that, we come to the end of the presentation. We now, I hand it over back to Anna. Thank you, Piyush. We will now begin the Q&A session you can click on the raise hand option, which will enable the moderator to unmute you for posing your query. Please introduce yourself before posing your query and kindly restrict to a maximum of two questions per participant so that we may be able to address questions from all participants. We will wait for a few moments while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Costa. Please introduce yourself and ask your question. Yeah, hi, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Please go ahead. Hi, so uh, I'm from BMSPL. It's a family office. So uh, I had uh, a few questions uh, regarding your the, the, the Hindustan Media Ventures business. So uh, you know, your cost of goods sold has moved up from about 32% in FY21 to 44% in FY23. Now, uh, the global pulp prices are coming down. Uh, so I wanted to really understand, could you explain to us how sustainable this, this trend is uh, from how you all are seeing it on global pulp prices coming down and also how much inventory what is the inventory days for you? How much inventory do you hold of high cost uh, paper already? And so, so, so basically what I wanted to understand was how do you see gross margins going into FY24? And then the second part of the question is, uh, you know, we're going into election year. So since we're going in, since FY24 is, uh, you know, we're getting closer to elections. How do you see in the sprint business uh, revenue growth, you know, in terms of circulation and advertisement revenue. Right. Well, cost of on the first part, we definitely see the gross margins expanding from here on. The pulp prices and indeed the, the new sprint prices have been now coming down for like three, four months. Uh, and we don't go very long in a, in, a, in, a, in a commodity cycle, which is coming down. We don't stock very long inventory. But, uh, you know, our inventory prices will in production start coming down now. So you will see the margin expanding from here on. And we are not sitting on a very long inventory uh, inventory uh, pile as well. So that's point number one. Uh, on the election year, of course, uh, you know, there will be election revenues which will come. And uh, I think uh, right from the festive, which will start, uh, let's say, in late September, October, uh, right up to election, I believe, uh, I believe the revenue outlook should be reasonably buoyant. Fair enough. You know, I understand all these points you mentioned, but the main, I, and I know you don't give guidance, but could you give some sort of, you know, uh, indication as to how can we get back to these high single digit EBITDA margins, not including other income? I mean, well, only two things, cost of, so let me, uh, okay, so let, let's brainstorm this. You are, you are absolutely right. I think it's a great question. So one is obviously the commodity prices. 
Now, newsprint, uh, you know, depending on the price of the newsprint, it constitutes anywhere between 30 to 40 percent of the bill of materials, depending on what the commodity prices are. As it is coming down, obviously, it it will uh, it will uh, expand the margin. The only other thing is which I've been highlighting on the calls earlier is the pricing. Now, as you are aware that the volumes have come back, if you look at the industry volumes in Hindi, in languages, in English, most of the volumes are now back to pre-pandemic level. But however, the pricing is still a challenge. I mean, depending on market to market, uh, you know, in some markets, pricing is as low as 65, 70%, whereas in other markets, it's 80, 85%. We've started a very uh, aggressive pricing program, but as you can understand, pricing is a competitive activity in the marketplace, but we are very hopeful from now uh, to the balance of this calendar year itself, uh, you know, we should reach substantial pricing and the moment pricing uh, comes and pricing falls directly to the bottom line. So without other income, there are only two levers. One is the raw material prices, which you have a better sense than I do. Uh, and the pricing, which I'm telling you that we've instituted a program which should help immensely, but you know, it will not be a flip of a switch. I mean, we are, we have started this program two months back uh, we are, uh, you know, trying to push uh, that number as much as possible, but it's a competitive market. The only good news is since the volumes are back, it gives us confidence to undertake this journey. Last year, same time, we didn't have the confidence to hit the pricing paddle because the volumes weren't back then. Okay, great. And just last question, if you uh, would allow me. Uh, you know, one of the biggest concerns when we talk about this company is, is that you've got a lot of cash lying on your books and you don't use it. So is there any update on utilizing the cash on the books? Well, Kostav, I have no fresh information to uh, uh, give on that side. Uh, the only point I can say, you know, and people can say hindsight is 2020. We've seen the start of the pandemic to the end of the pandemic. I think that cash held us in very good stead, uh, you know, because the revenues collapsed the way they collapsed and it took more than 18 months for them to anemically start building back. But at this point in time, I don't have any fresh information to give on cash. Okay, thank you for your time. Thanks. The next question is from Mehul Parik. Please introduce yourself and ask your question. <clears throat> Hello. Uh, good afternoon. I'm an individual shareholder. My name is Mehul. Hi, Mehul. So I yeah, hi. So I had uh, basically two questions. One is that uh, in OTT Play, our uh, uh, online uh, OTT aggregator app, there are other players like uh, Tata's and all DTH players and broadband players who ha already have a customer base. So what uh, makes us so confident that uh, we have a right to win? When I mean a right to win is be in the top two players in the country. Uh, what gives us that confidence and, uh, you know, uh, but the plan that we will be there. Second question is that uh, we have a five, basically four or five live uh, uh, digital projects. One of them is Slur. So when do we expect this kind of, uh, 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 this business to become cash positive? Okay. So let me first address the OTT plays. So you are right. Yes. There are a lot of players in the market. But what OTT Play is trying to do is aggregate the OTT so that people seamlessly can move to a certain genre and seamlessly with a single sign-on at a discounted price, watch, uh, you know, watch the content that they want to watch, irrespective of the platform that content is hosted on. So, you know, the DTH players or the other broadband players, some of them, DTH players are definitely having their own proprietary app on which they are working. But what we are trying to do is aggregate the market. Now, of course, there are a few aggregators as well. And this is like aggregation has happened in various places. Uh, you know, we are trying to aggregate the OTT because that's a big theme which is growing. And that content is now uh, really, really, uh, you know, growing at a speed of 18 to 19% annually and slated to grow uh, like that for the, at least the next five years. Now, what will come out of it? You know, we are approaching that from a multiple price point. So, you know, there are mm -hmm. markets like Delhi, Bombay and Bangalore, whereby a lot of people have, uh, you know, subscribed to uh, multiple OTTs and paying that subscription. So if you do the sum of parts, the kind of OTT platform that you're getting, the single login and the single subscription is at a steep discount to what you would otherwise, uh, you know, have to pay to get uh, access to all that content. So it's an aggregation play, right? Uh, I, and 
it can't be directly compared to a uh, you know a, a Tata or uh, various other people, but uh, you know there are other players. So yeah, you wanted to say something. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. So so I I understand that model of the business. What I'm asking you is that like for example, Tata Binge is offering 27 channels, similar packages, aggregating the channel uh, OTT apps OTTs together. So I, a lot of people are moving. I keep getting Airtel messages regarding uh, a kind of aggregate uh, discounted pricing. So basically, all of this have a, a legitimate customer base which is already a part of their uh, view, viewing viewership so what makes us uh, stand out that we will corner a market share there well i had never said that we're going to corner the market share i'm saying market is good enough for more than one player right so yeah you know, yeah but can we be in the top two and what what makes yeah. us there yeah so please segregate the market in ncc uh -huh. a b and c in mm -hmm. nccs b and c market there are a lot of people who are mm -hmm. still through the cable, the cord cutting still not happened there because either the broadband is not there, uh, you know, and 5G is not reached there, etc. And they want to watch it on TV. And maybe mm -hmm. they don't want to take a, uh, you know, a, a Tata where they want to, uh, you know, if the cable is not there. So, you know, mm -hmm. we are trying to access a certain segment of the market mm -hmm. whereby we can, you know, with that, with the proposition that we have, tap the NCCS B and NCCS C market. That's a big mm -hmm. I'm I'm not even saying for a moment that we'll be going head to head against an Airtel or a Geo who are bundling mm -hmm. 15 to 20 app. I think that's not possible because they are basically bundling with their broadband uh, broadband uh, uh, stuff. So there's a separate section of market that we're trying to address, and mm -hmm. I don't believe that the market uh, you know will be saturated and won by a single player. So I think we have a right to win, but in a certain segment of market that we've kind of basis our research carved out for ourselves. So have we got, uh, have we collected some good numbers over the last three, four months? Well, last three, four months have been slightly slow because some of our critical uh, key partnerships that we are doing, uh, you know, yeah. is going some uh, a little slow, but, you know, we've been also surprised on the positive side with the potential of doing multiple other value added services with, uh, you know, those, uh, uh, those uh, tier two, tier three town, uh, you know, operators whereby we can you know, uh, do certain more value added services and, uh, you know, take this slightly higher on the value chain. But I would say it's encouraging, but not super, superbly encouraging at this point in time. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, the second point was about slurp, like th those, those channels which are there. Uh, wh when do we expect them to become cash positive for us? You know, so slurp is not taking a lot of money at this point in time. We don't even yeah. invest investing too much money at this point in time. Correct. Uh, uh, we, uh, you know, that particular segment, that particular uh, theme, I think is a very relevant theme. Hence, we are still in a pilot stage. I don't think we have any ambition to sc scale up Slurp at this point in time. We will see how it goes later on, but we, uh, Slurp is not uh, burning a lot of money. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from Yash R. Please introduce yourself and ask your question. Hi, Piyush. Uh, good afternoon. Hi, Yash. Yeah, so my first question is with regards to the other income, which I can see has increased uh, by quite a bit versus previous year. What is the reason behind the same? This is a, uh, this is a, uh, uh, yes, this is Anna here. Yeah. This is largely linked to uh, Treasury. Um, uh, you know, last year, same time, there were multiple rate actions, etc., which had happened, which therefore there was uh, a fairly high MTM, mark to market uh, Loss. impact, losses that we had taken. In this quarter, on the contrary, now we are expecting the, you know, uh, rate actions to kind of, uh, near a pause and therefore there is empty mark to market gains that has happened that's really accounting for the fluctuation okay and uh, my second question is with regards to the employee benefits expense now i can see although there is a slight reduction but what is the reason behind the same versus previous year is what i'm talking about again uh, there is a, actually versus previous year quite a, a substantial uh, reduction uh, and that is on we do have um, you know certain provisions which have been trued up basis final payouts of variable etc so because of that uh, there is savings in the uh, employer cost line oh sorry i didn't i didn't get the last part it is on account of so it uh, yes Piyush decide we've trued up the provisions the unwarranted provisions have been written back uh, which were then q1 last year 
you know, so the variable payout which happens basis the performance. These provisions are trued up every quarter. Okay, There's okay, okay. Not this quarter. Okay, got it, got it. All right, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Mehul Pathak. Please uh, introduce yourself and ask your question. Can you hear me? Yeah, Mehul, hi. Uh, hi, Piyush, Anna, Parvez. Uh, my greetings. Uh, uh, congratulations on uh, an improved set of performance in the last quarter. Uh, and we, we shall not disappoint you going forward, Mr. Pathak. No, no, I hope, uh, you know, after the questions, you don't remain disappointed. <laughs> so, uh, no, actually, uh, Piyush, I was just, uh, you know, had a, some uh, overview uh, on the whole media, what is happening in the stock market and all that, you know. So, if you look at Jagran Prakashan and uh, DB Corp, uh, the stock price have run up big time. I have not checked their quarterly results and what they are showing, but clearly... Uh, from the market side, the expectation of performance from print media uh, has significantly changed. So, if we see the market as a sort of a you know uh, indicator in terms of the pricing it is giving to other companies, uh, a little disappointed you know uh, should be the HT Media shareholders. Our market, you know, our stock price is not running up. Now, when I look at our market cap. Even the book value of uh, Hindustan media is not captured in our market cap, which means our company is selling for free. If you are to get even the book value of Hindustan media, HT media will, you know, all the assets of HT media are today, you know, selling at a price of zero as per what the stock price is. So the stock market is, you know, making a very strong statement by not, you know, buying our stock. So, uh, uh, are there any thoughts of unlocking, unlocking value of various assets that we have? Uh, is there, because in the last three or four years, COVID was there, COVID is gone. Uh, performance wise, even today, we continue to make losses. So the book value will continue to keep coming down. Uh, is there some way of, you know, you all are thinking of unlocking value for the shareholder? Uh, maybe this is an AGM question, but... Uh, the thought came to my mind, so I asked the question. My second question is that DG content, is there any update? You know, there is silence even on the uh, in the notes on the DG, DG content quarterly result. What is happening in the company? Uh, uh, if all the NCLT issues are solved and, you know, company was going to come up with a revised proposal to take shares back from the shareholder. So, uh, could you please share your perspective on these two questions? So, Mayo, let me answer the uh, the second question first. Look, on Digi Content Limited, we made an honest effort at that point in time, but we couldn't uh, get the support of all the shareholders, which was required to take that scheme through. Now, you know, it will be foolhardy to come up with, uh, you know, various schemes unless and until we've stitched the support of all the shareholders who can sign off on a certain scheme. But is the thought in our mind? Answer is absolutely yes. Will we do it like in the next couple of quarters? I can't say that, but, you know, we absolutely have to unlock that value and that, that is the honest attempt that we made one and a half years ago. Uh, so, you know, watch that space. We will be back on that. But right now, I have nothing to say. Now, coming on the stock price, and I totally understand that the performance of Bhaskar, which came last week, is much superior. But if you break down the revenue, I mean, the three state elections, etc., are sitting and driving uh, 13 to 14% of growth in that uh, 17% and which states we don't have a presence. Now we are approaching the national election. We will see how it goes. The good news, of course, is that on the pricing side, as I was just uh, telling, uh, you know, another participant earlier on, we've started a program which will hold us in very good stead. And if everything goes well from now uh, to the uh, general elections, which are slated for next year, we will see growth going, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, multifold from here on. But of course, and, and that coupled with the with the raw material price decrease, et cetera, et cetera, should drive a certain level of operating leverage, which has been a little tough. Uh, you know, the answer on the stock market, actually, look, I mean, HTML and HMBL are also 20 and 30% up in the last six months. So markets are doing something what the markets will do. But your first part of the question is absolutely valid. I mean, you know, uh, it's a pathetic market price that, uh, you know, uh, trading at less than the book value doesn't make any sense at all. 
but really can i impact that directly we will do whatever is in our best interest for all shareholders unlocking the value on digital is definitely top of mind and watch this space we will come back to you we will solicit your thoughts and comments if you have a better thought uh, but share you on the operating performances of both print businesses and the digital businesses which we are not answering in this call you know i think from here on you will see the next 3 4 quarters really building uh, you know from the momentum that we've seen and uh, i don't read too much into the 20 and 20% and 30% stock price up in the last 3 uh, 4 months for both html and hmbl because they're still substantially discounted and i take your point on that thanks piyush we look forward you know uh, because last 4 years uh, at least some financial reengineering potential was there in the company you no know, and you being such a seasoned cfo we expect that you know uh, and anna also being there how you engage with the mutual fund industry uh, you know have people's buy in on our stock uh, uh, i think a lot of potential is there to work in that area and uh, with the quality of management that we have uh, Fair enough. Mm -hmm. We take the point, and I think I think we'll uh, certainly be. Uh, we are putting our heads together. We still don't have a hundred percent solve for it, but we will be approaching all the shareholders, uh, you know, to seek their buy-in before we announce, uh, you know, the next steps on unlocking that value. Thanks, Piyush. Thank you. The next question is from Ankit Patel. please introduce yourself and ask your question hello am i audible yeah hi ankit go ahead please yeah hi uh, so uh, i i'm with hsbc mutual fund uh my question was around the radio business uh you know the radio business uh, seem to have peaked uh, sometime in 1920 where you had a run rate of around 60 Or crores of revenue per quarter, and you're making an EBITDA of about sixteen to twenty crores at that time. Uh, whereas, if we see the situation right now, uh, it, it seems to have halved, and I can understand COVID was a period in between. But we can start. I mean, we already start seeing revenue uh, a good amount of recovery there in the radio business for you know other players. Um, Uh, is there a scale issue over here uh, for HT Media in terms of having fifteen stations and uh, being able to? So, want to understand from you, you know, how, how do you see recovery coming through over here because it's now making an EBITDA of only two crores compared to that peak level of sixteen crores or so uh, on a quarterly basis? Uh, second question on the same thing is that in case this is not in this business is not, I mean, at the moment, radio. Uh, how are you looking at it in the future? Uh, are you looking to expand in terms of radio station approach uh, maybe have an maybe acquire you know recently we heard that z media also wanted to enter into the business uh, by acquiring something uh, what are what is your future plan uh, for this radio business look on the radio business you have to peel the onion a little bit to understand the economics of course you are right i mean there was a time where radio business actually peaked out the entire industry peaked out and then covid happened and then after that the entire industry is under a, under the weather a little bit now when you compare the relative performance of our radio business to some of our competitors you have to understand that uh, you know regul uh, you know regulations have a big bearing on the radio business now the government obviously by doing a certain level of auctioning had taken uh, you know their uh, their part of the uh, money well in advance whereas the in industry has been under the under the cloud for the last 3 4 years covid or no covid now obviously with multiple representation uh, as you would be aware government is contemplating of various steps on license fees uh, the time duration of uh, this uh, period the government advertising rates so on so forth which of course is a industry level thing and it will help the entire sector but you know if you basically model those things out i think radio will come back to the uh, 1920 if not 1920 at least 80 90% of profitability there sooner rather than later but it has a huge regulatory play so you know i really can't comment on that but uh, you know those are the things that we are grappling with as far as our ambitions on radio are concerned of course with the in, uh, with the sector itself uh, you know getting the raw side of the stick uh, you know in terms of lis listenership and the disruptions that the digital medium has done on the broadcast medium we are also reinventing this medium apart from terrestrial we are trying to uh, you know button in various other digital the post podcast the music 
uh, you know, what we call the uh, non-FCT, which means the integrations of on-air and non-on-air events, et cetera, with it to drive revenue profitably on this medium. Uh, so if some of these things, apart from the regulatory things, have their play, uh, you know, you'll see uh, the trend line, uh, you know, shifting in the, in, in the positive direction in the next couple of quarters. Of course, regulations will play the single biggest role in this. Uh, when you say regulation, uh, you mean uh, the, the uh, license fee uh, that is being charged by Prasar Bharti and... Uh, uh, yeah, so the license and, uh, fee, if you remember, the license fee is the higher, is the higher of 4.5% of uh, revenue or 2.5% of notive. So people, you know, who for whom the notive value is very low, which means the tier 2 and tier 3 town, I mean, their total charge of on license fees is just about 4% of their revenue. Whereas guys who have a presence in big, uh, big, uh, you know, cities like us end up playing, paying something like 30% of uh, revenue because of the government's formula. And now government is obviously finally after 10, 12 years kind of taking cognizance that they have put down a, uh, you know, consultation paper, which is currently with try. So if that goes forward and they uh, take away this notive thing, then it will be a level playing ground. Then you can see 27% of the revenue falling to the bottom line straight away for guys like us who have a big city play as against some of our competition who have a small uh, small uh, city play whereby uh, the uh, the notive values are like one by uh, 50th of what our notive values are okay this is the last question on this uh, i understand uh, what you are mentioning uh, so in that respect then with 15 stations at play uh, would you be looking to add more stations or yeah, since you are uh, sounding upbeat on the business uh, going I forward, have, I have I have no reason to be uh, you know uh, to look. I have no reason to be either a bit or be delusional or be very very pessimistic about the business. I am saying I am a very realist on this. You know, from here on, the past I can't do much about. But if the future is bright, we don't mind kind of scaling up. Uh, and it's not fifteen; it's seventeen stations. Uh, so we don't mind. Uh, it's twenty-two stations basically, not uh, fifteen or seventeen. Uh, we don't mind scaling it up provided we see the financial box becoming more robust by government and regulatory intervention, which is actually tilted the uh, playing field against operators like us who have a big city play. And big city, if you remember, pre the uh, nine, uh, 18, 19 or 1920 also was where disproportionate revenue was com coming. So we didn't mind paying that kind of a high license fees. But now when the markets have shifted, the government has to basically look at this whole thing very pragmatically. Okay, thank you. Yes. The next question is from Rohit Janwar. Please uh, introduce yourself and ask your question. Yeah, uh, good afternoon. Myself, Rohit Jawar from Kotak Mahindra Bank. Uh, so my question is related to the pricing, which we have discussed that we have rolled out some plans to, you know, increase the pricing. So uh, the question is related to uh, when, when we looked at, uh, you know, the peer uh, within the industry and we, we compare our revenue vis-a-vis uh, their revenue sets and the EBIT margins, then there is still a, there is a good gap vis-a-vis uh, -vis the peers and the our EBIT level. So is it purely due to the pricing which we could not match and still there is a good gap and how are we going to, you know, bridge this gap in near term? Look, I, you know, pricing is a substantial uh, part of the delta that you're observing vis-a-vis -vis the peer set. Scale is, of course, the second one. But, you know, all other things remaining equal, if you look at our pre-pandemic pricing, which you can read into our margins versus the peer set, it was the delta was only the scale part at that point in time. And scale, you know, we can always scale as long as, you know, we get substantial amount of revenues coming. But at this level of uh, pricing, it doesn't make any more sense to incur costs by increasing copies. So hence, what we are doing is from a right manner, we're trying to correct the pricing to a certain index of the pre-COVID level. And the scale difference will always remain unless we scale up to that level. But even without scaling up to that level, you have seen our financials of uh, right from 16, 17 onwards up till pandemic, our margins were pretty robust. And that's where we want to come to before we look at the scale in those particular markets. Because please understand, uh, you know, our, uh, let's say a market in which we have a reasonable pole position uh, is Bihar, which is not as robust or as lucrative a market as UP is where some of our competitors play.
Rohit, you are on mute. Please unmute yourself. And Rohit, are you there? Moving on, uh, the next question is from the line of Kostov. Please unmute yourself and ask your question. Yeah, hi. Uh, so just, uh, you know, going back to a previous question of mine uh, regarding your print business, what is the exact, uh, if you could actually give the amount of months, uh, the, the, the figure, for your raw material inventory days? Look, like, Costa, uh, you you know, know, let, let me give you a sense. You know, though we won't give you an exact number, but let me give you a sense. We have never in a falling commodity price market gone beyond three to four months. Of that three to four months, not everything is sitting in go-down. Some is in transit as well. That is exactly the situation right now because the new contracts that we are negotiating, uh, you know, with the raw material suppliers, are for three months after that. So, you know, it will never exceed uh, that part, but obviously you have to keep a cover of at least 90 days, including the in-transit inventory, because some of this inventory is imported. No, so that's exactly my question, because if your inventory days is about three months, the actual effect of falling prices will only come now, right? Or yes. Is that, correct? Is that, a that correct? Is a, That's exactly the point I'm saying. So in, in, in this quarter, the first quarter FY24, uh, you know, our in inventory valuation happens on a weighted average, right? In this quarter, you've only seen about 5% of the impact flow through. But now as we progress into the second quarter and the third quarter, you know, this will geometrically improve. 5 will go to 10 and 10 will go to 15%. And is that is that good enough to make you a bit more positive without including other income? Uh, yes, it, it, it itself will do that. But there is also a yield program just to let you know. But that's good enough. That, that we spoke about, that you mentioned. Uh, yeah. Now, you know, on your cash, just a question. If you're not going to invest it, why don't you reward shareholders in some way, like a yeah, buyback but, or something? But cost of VR investing in OTT play, aren't we? Uh, no, under HMVL or under HD Media? Under HMVL. Okay, okay. So you are using that cash. Absolutely. We're trying to create long-term sustainable value for shareholders. And if our thesis that the NCCSB and NCCSC market, the aggregation play can work well, then, you know, we might have a good business on our hand. But obviously, time will tell, you know. We no, but just what is this that you're investing in? Could you explain it to me? I didn't quite understand. What are you trying to do? So, cost of just a quick thing because uh, we, we have to get to the next. But we are trying to aggregate multiple OTT players into a single login. And, and and distribute that to the end consumer via various channels whereby they can, you know, they can get access to content on 15, 20 logins for a fraction of the price which they would have had to otherwise pay to get access to all those OTT platforms. Does something like this already exist? Which uh, I can... No one has a pure play aggregation like this, but of course, guys like uh, the big telcos like Geo and Airtel are doing with their broadband services. Uh, but we are doing it on a pure play aggregation platform and going to the tier two and tier three towns here. Okay, okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. With this, we come to the end of the Q&A session. If you have any further queries, please reach out to the investor relations team. Our contact details are given in the investor presentation and are also mentioned on our websites. I now hand over to Piyush for closing remarks. <clears throat> Thanks, Aditya. Uh, thank you very much for joining our quarterly call. Uh, uh, we had a good discussion. And as I uh, said uh, during the call, uh, from here on, uh, we are very hopeful uh, that the margins, EBITDA margins, and indeed uh, the bottom line will improve uh, uh, from here on. Uh, so we thank you for your support and we wish you all the very best and have a great day and year ahead.